Tommy with Elevation Every Weekend here. In today's video, we're gonna do a one year, 1,000 mile review of my 2020 Surly ice cream truck. I've actually had the bike uh, probably closer to 14 months now, uh, but just getting around to uh, doing this comprehensive review. Uh, and this review is really the culmination of one year plus of riding the bike in its basically stock condition. And I really wanted to spend a, a good amount of time with the bike in stock form and ride it in all types of conditions. Uh, before doing a review like this. So in today's video, I'm not gonna really go into explicit detail on the spec of the bike. Um, I've done that on prior videos. I will link all those down below if you really wanna see the specifics of all the components. Uh, but I will touch on some at more of a higher level view just on how they performed. So in my year plus with the bike and about a thousand miles with the bike, uh, I've tested it in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado in all types of conditions. I've done, most of the miles on the bike are probably accumulated through uh, dirt road riding and gravel grinding. Um, so even though the bike's not a dedicated gravel bike, it's just uh, always fun to ride and it's super comfortable with the big tires. One of the other areas I've really tested this bike is on climbing, whether it be really steep and short punchy climbs, uh, technical climbing, or big mountain climbing like at high elevation, long duration type climbs uh, often that are also very technical with very chunky conditions. Uh, I've really tested the bike uh, on climbing and descending in all those types of conditions. So probably the one area, and this probably applies to most fat bikes, but especially the ice cream truck, is pavement riding is not a strong suit. Um, there's certainly better options or uh, things you can do to make the bike better at that. But you know, certainly like any bike, you know, it does function as a pavement pounder uh, when you have to do it, uh, but it's not, it's the one type of riding that I would probably, I don't really do with the bike just because it's not really tailored for it. So again, in conjunction with all the climbing I've done with the bike, there's been a number of big mountain rides I've done with it, which have introduced various conditions uh, and the bike has excelled in all those as far as uh, the climbing aspects obviously, but obviously the other part of that is the descending aspect and the bike does really well on descents. And that's for two main reasons. One, that the bike is extremely stable. Uh, you know, that's attributed to the large tires. You know, it's a very stable bike to ride. Because it does have a moderately slack and favorable geometry, um, it, it actually descends really well. And then the last aspect of the riding, you know, I've certainly done my share of, you know, front range, single track and sand type riding. And the bike uh, just, you know, flows right through all that stuff uh, really well. It's a really great bike to ride. And any of that kind of flowy, fun, single track type stuff, it does really well in that style. And that's really because, again, the geometry Geometry is kind of tailored for that, uh, but with the uh, all the traction you have, it does really good at speed when you're carving corners and things like that. You know, it has a lot of grip. So in all those non-snow conditions, the bike has, has really excelled and it's been really impressive. You know, even though I did mention pavement not being a strong suit, I did do one ride this year that was a pavement, all pavement ride. And it was, I rode the highest uh, road in North America, which is Mount Evans, which is a 14er in Colorado. It's over 30 miles from top to bottom. At the parking lot summit, it's uh, 14,130 feet. And I actually did take the bike up to the full summit, which is at 14,260. But even though that was a pavement ride, because it was mostly climbing and descending, uh, the bike actually excelled. So it was actually you know, beneficial to have the fat bike uh, up near the top where the road conditions were terrible. So you know, after doing a, you know, over 15 miles of climbing and 4,000 feet of elevation gain to get up there, uh, you have to go back down and descending the bike was fantastic because again, it's extremely stable, feels very safe. The geometry is really good on a long descent like that. And it was just an outstanding bike uh, to, to come down that mountain. Being a fat bike, you know, I have ridden it in the snow uh, locally and up in the mountains. I've done a number of you know, big mountain technical snow rides. The bike's just outstanding. It really does excel in the snow. It's probably of the bikes I own and have ever ridden, uh, it's probably the best uh, fat bike in the snow that I've ever ridden. If I'm going up in the mountains to do a snow ride, it's probably the one I prefer uh, to choose. Uh, now I do have a Surly Pugsley and a Salsa Bear Grease, and it's not like there's a huge gap between those bikes. Those bikes are also uh, excellent in the snow. But if I have to pick one bike uh, for unknown snow conditions, it's the one bike I would, I would pick because I know uh, it rolls over uh, just about anything. So basically the characteristics that really make this bike excel are the geometry uh, combined with the, the large tires. It just provides a platform that is extremely stable and has unparalleled traction. Uh, whether you're climbing or descending or riding a technical terrain at slow speeds, it, it really rolls over and is very stable in all those conditions, whether you're at high speed or low speed. So just to highlight, even though uh, mine is a 2020 and that's what I'm talking about, 
Um, the 2021 bike is essentially the exact same bike. So basically everything I'm saying about my bike uh, will apply to the current model as well. So overall, my bike has been completely reliable. I've had no issues with the bike, uh, but I did wanna just kind of run through the main aspects of the bike uh, from the ground up, just to touch on a few things and uh, how, how the components are holding up over, over the last year. So starting with the, the tires and the wheels, I have had my bike set up tubeless uh, from day one and it was set up with stands which has worked well. I've had no issues with flats or burping and that's uh, you know doing you know technical uh, trail riding in the summer or being uh, aired down really low in the winter. I've had no issues at all any type of air loss. The tires are the Surly Bud and Lou combination and they are 26 inch diameter by 4.8 inch width and uh, they've been fantastic. Again the, the traction of the tires has been great. I've, you know, I've got about a thousand miles on them and the tread wear is negligible on them so it's almost not noticeable so they're extremely durable tires. I um, haven't had any, you know, I, as I said, no flats, no punctures, no abrasions, no obvious tire damage. And I've ridden them, you know, in some really, you know, gnarly, rocky conditions. They pro provided um, amazing traction, especially when you get the air pressure right. And uh, the volume of the tires, uh, you know, absolutely give comfort and a suspension effect. The wheels are the 26 inch Other Brother Darrow wheels, Surly wheels. Uh, they're 80 millimeters wide and again, they've been they've been great. I haven't had any issues with them No issues with the spokes the hubs have been completely uh, reliable So thus far, you know, the wheels and tires have been fantastic The only thing I will point out and this is only applies to the rear tire is even though I haven't had any issues with uh, Air loss or any problems with that recently in the last few months I have noticed some seepage from the rear tire on the sidewall uh, of the sealant It was not an issue, uh, you know in the, in the first you know six or eight months. It's only been in the last several months that that's occurred uh, but I suspect that's probably just the case of wear and tear uh, because I have ridden in such you know aggressive rocky conditions all, all throughout the summer uh, the sidewalls have probably uh, taken a bit of a beating so that's that's what I suspect uh, the issue is there so moving up now to the drivetrain it does have the Shimano 1x12 SLX and it has performed a uh, great I haven't had any issues with shifting or any performance issues at all the drivetrain is really paired well with this bike so it has a uh, plenty of gear to climb so it is a almost 35 pound fat bike and it climbs exceptionally well as I've proven and like I said you know if you look at the prior videos you can see the types of things I've done with it and it's definitely excelled in those conditions uh, and it does have adequate uh, top speed uh, on the flats so I don't really you know want for more there either uh, it has a, a fantastic range as well paired with the bike moving up to the brakes now this is probably the one area where I will give it more of a marginal score. Uh, it does have the Tektro uh, brakes. I've never had issues with them. And on the Shirley Ice Cream truck, they're not bad, so it's not a problem. However, I have noticed when I do those long, big mountain descents, uh, they do get overmatched. They do uh, show signs of fade. I mean, they do get noisy in those conditions. So it's just something to be aware of. You know, I probably am, you know, with, with that bike on those types of descents, you know, when you're descending miles, thousands of feet, uh, it really probably is pushing them to the max. Um, and they do work, you know, I've never felt unsafe with them, but it's just the one thing that I would probably see uh, for myself, at least on this bike in stock form, I would probably maybe uh, step it up and, and, and upgrade. It does have a 180 millimeter front and 160 millimeter rear uh, rotor which I think is appropriately sized for the bike. The brakes do exhibit some fade in the most extreme conditions. If your riding does not include those types of conditions, if you're riding mostly, you know, more moderate flat terrain, you may never notice any issues with the brakes. But just something I thought I'd point out since I think I probably have reached the limit of the brakes on this bike with the riding I do out here in Colorado. As far as the other, you know, components of the bike, uh, you know, the, the wide salsa bars, you know, have been good. The WTB uh, Volt saddle, uh, is adequate. I, you know, I have those uh, WTB saddles on multiple bikes, and I've always had good luck with them. Uh, but it is probably uh, one area where you know a lot of people might want to upgrade, and I may do so in the future. I'll talk about upgrades here shortly. But uh, overall, the component spec of the bike has been very solid, very reliable, and um, been very satisfied with it. And now going to the centerpiece of the bike, which is the frame and fork itself. It's been completely durable, completely reliable. I've had no issues with it. Um, I did put uh, paint protection, frame protection on the bike uh, day one, so it still looks like brand new. 
uh, and it's performed well, so hopefully that continues. So just to kind of summarize the pros and the cons, uh, from the pro side of things, this is more of a subjective statement, but I, you know, I will just go on record and saying I think it's a great looking bike. I've always been a big fan of the Surly steel frame aesthetic, uh, you know, and this bike definitely delivers on that aspect, and you know, the prickly pear color. Uh, I've never had a bike uh, that I've ever owned or ridden that's uh, generated so many smiles and waves and questions, positive reaction from people as this bike. And that's great to see, you know, when you're out and about. So after all these miles, uh, it still looks fantastic. The other pro is, you know, as I've kind of already covered, you know, the bike overall has been extremely durable and reliable. I've had no issues with the bike. It definitely gets put to the test out here in the Rocky Mountains. So um, it's definitely proven itself uh, to really be able to take everything I've thrown at it so far and uh, you know it's it still rides uh, just like it has day one. Another major pro is it's proven to be a highly capable bike and it's obviously a highly versatile bike uh, for different types of riding uh, so that that's a major uh, plus if you're considering one of these bikes. And probably the biggest pro for this bike is uh, the level of performance and durability that it exhibits. It does so at a very moderate price point so you know my bike was two thousand dollars last year uh, the current bike is uh, going for $2,099, uh, but you get a really good spec, a really reliable bike, and a highly capable and versatile bike uh, at, at that price point. I do have a few cons I want to mention. Uh, probably the, the most obvious thing is the weight. Uh, the bike comes in, my bike as it sits, which is a large frame, is uh, just under 35 pounds. That is with a, uh, uh, an aluminum bottle cage and uh, pedals, and it's not a light bike. Uh, but you know, it, it is a steel frame bike and it does have a uh, large 4.8 inch tires. I would certainly recommend if you get one of these, definitely have it set up tubeless. Even with that, it's still uh, on the heavy side of the, the fat bike spectrum. The other kind, which I did already kind of touch on, are the brakes. So again, for some people, depending on the type of riding or the terrain you're riding, uh, that may never uh, factor in as an issue. Uh, but for me, the riding I do out here, it is something I notice. And again, it is one of those things. It's probably the only thing on this, the stock spec uh, that uh, an upgrade would, would really benefit the bike. So I did want to talk about the bike going forward. So I did want to dedicate a good gear to this bike in near stock form. Uh, so I do have some ideas for some upgrades. And I think the one thing that this bike would probably benefit most from would be a dropper seat post. Uh, I think the bike has a lot of untapped potential that a, you know, a dropper would certainly uh, help with. Uh, the bike already performs well on descents and you know somewhat technical flowy trail riding in stock form but a dropper seat post i think would really wake it up on on all those aspects i did mention the saddle the wtb volt saddle which you know, i'm satisfied with you know i don't have any issues with it uh, but it is an area where i think i might look to do an upgrade i'm thinking maybe doing something like a brook saddle or something like that something uh, that's kind of you know next level that'll may hopefully be you know, a comfort improvement too but you know also you know just give the bike uh, a little bit of a unique uh, look and flair something that's more on the long term list uh, it's not something that i'm immediately looking to do and that's going to be maybe uh, looking at a front suspension and there's a couple different forks out there I'm eyeballing right now. I have decided though that I think the ice cream truck is going to be uh, my bike packing rig for this year at least. Uh, so you'll probably be seeing more content uh, throughout the year as far as kitting it up for bike packing and various adventures there. Uh, but I will probably do some sort of a wheel and or tire upgrade for bike packing. That's just because you know I just want something that's lighter, more efficient, faster rolling uh, for bike packing. Um, so definitely look out for that uh, as we go along. So just to summarize, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the bike. I'm really glad I bought it. Uh, not only has it performed well and been very durable and reliable, it's really hit all the marks on the fun factor. And like I said, the response I get from people, it's just been an exceptional bike in, in all those more subjective and hard to measure areas. Uh, it's really performed well. I think overall as a bone stock bike, I would give it a very strong eight and a half out of 10. And I think just a couple smart mods on the bike could you know, certainly push that even higher. Even though it is such a great bike, uh, it, still has untapped potential i think which is great you know because you know everyone wants to uh you know tailor the bike and or get more out of it and i think uh, it has more to give so excited to uh, experiment with some of those uh, things down the road and see if i can make it even better i think there's few bikes on the market that can deliver the capability the versatility of this bike uh, and deliver a 
solid part spec at the price point that it delivers it at. But from everything I've seen, it's highly regarded in the fat biking community, and I can see why, because I'm a huge fan of the bike. You know, I own multiple bikes and multiple fat bikes, and it's the one bike I look at and still think in 10 years that I would expect to have it in my garage. So uh, I hope that uh, ends up being the case. All right, guys, I hope you found this one year, thousand mile review of the Surly ice cream truck uh, helpful and useful. If you have any questions, definitely drop those down below. I have a number of videos linked down below if you really wanna dive deep into the capability uh, and what this bike can do. Those are all linked down below in the description. Again, any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, definitely drop those down below. I definitely respond to all of my comments. We have big plans coming for this year uh, as far as uh, fat biking and adventure biking. If you wanna see what direction I take the ice cream truck in next, uh, definitely think about subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and thanks a lot and have a great day.